Okay, so today um, is the third video for this class. If you haven't watched the first video, the one that says watch first, stop watching this and watch that one first. With that being said, today I'm moving on to another Euripides, Hippolytus. Um, I prefer the, uh, the Euripides, the Hippolytus, I prefer the Hippolytus. I prefer the Euripides to the Seneca. Um, and this is the second time we've read and I assume it's going to continue this way, a Euripides and a Seneca. But I just really prefer the Euripides, so that's what I'm going to go off of. Um, spoiler alert, if you haven't read this, or you don't know the story, um, it's about a woman who's married to her king, and she has a stepson that goes by the name of Hippolytus. Um, depending on which version you read, different things unfold, but in this one, um, the issue is good old stepmom has a crush, has feelings, has love and desire for her stepson, Hippolytus. Now, some people in class freaked out and said, that's disgusting. Um, they use all kinds of words to describe their dislike for Hippolytus and the situation that's going on in it. But really, the mom's name is Phaedra, by the way. Um, we don't know what happened. We know that it's not her kid, so her husband could have had Hippolytus the same year she was born. I mean, back then, you know, kings took younger wives. It happened all the time. So, for all we know, Hippolytus and Phaedra could be the same age, or close to the same age, and then is it weird? I don't know. If she didn't raise him, and he just, you know, came up into this area, and she found out that there's a stepson, or we don't know the real backstory to it. <laughs> so to jump in and say that Phaedra is disgusting for having this feelings, these feelings for Hippolytus, I think that's kind of a jump to judge her that quickly. Um, Hippolytus, though, is kind of a douche. Yeah, I don't really know another way to describe him. He's kind of arrogant and thinks love. He he thinks he's better than love, and he thinks that he doesn't need sex and doesn't need those kind of things. And it would be cool if he was just, oh, I don't really need that, okay, and doesn't really talk about it, but he kind of like shoves it in your face, like, I am pure, I don't need anything, I love the god Artemis, which, um, obviously, the reason that Aphrodite is less than pleased, oh, and to start on this one, by the way, on the last video I told you how much I disliked the introduction. And so when I was assigned the introduction, I wasn't going to read it, and I didn't. And then I started the very first scene in Euripides Hippolytus, and Aphrodite, god Aphrodite, god of love and desire, gives away the entire story. It's like an introduction. So I was pissed, to say the least. I was like, oh, this time I'm going to get to read the story, because I don't know this story. And that didn't work out, because that bitch straight gave me the entire story away. So next time, we'll see what happens. I'm not going to read the introduction and hope for some kind of surprise in the story. I don't know. Anyway, it is pretty tragic. Um, in the fact that Phaedra does kill herself. She is so in love, but she doesn't want to act on it. And her nurse is, so many people said, the nurse loves her so much. No, the nurse is trifling and needs to stay out of everyone else's business. But Phaedra ends up hanging herself, and that that is the the tragic part to me. The fact that the king used his curse to hurt Hippolytus, kill Hippolytus in a sense, um, I didn't feel bad for Hippolytus because he's just not a likable character. So, yeah, in a tragedy, everyone dies, this, that, and the other, but um, I didn't... The only tragedy I saw here was Phaedra her killing herself so that she doesn't defile her name and her kingdom, her seat. She doesn't want her other children to have, you know, these issues. So I would assume that with the situation at hand, the king's probably not going to be mean to her other children. Anyway, that's kind of getting off on a tangent. But um, overall, good book, good play. Would I recommend it? To the Greek book? Probably. Um, probably not. 
I wouldn't recommend it to anyone probably. But if I were to Goodreads rate it, I would probably give it like a 2.5, maybe a 3. It was no Medea. It wasn't that craziness of Medea. Um, but it held my attention. It wasn't so boring that I had to spark snoops it or anything like that. Not that I spark snoops, but I didn't need to. Um, it read pretty easily. Again, with Euripides, the uh, translator, I don't know if it was the same translator as the one who did the Medea one, but a little modern. Kind of enjoyed it. Um, yeah, if you haven't read it, you know what I would really like? To see a modern film version of this. I think that would go over well. Maybe there is one. I'll have to Google it. I'll let you know. Mm-hmm.